there are a number of categories of tools each for each stage of the software development lifecycle phases. Some tools straddles various phases, some are very specific to individual phases. So let's look at the first stage, which is requirements analysis. And it's all about communication within the team and talking across different roles. So we need to be able to allow developers, managers, customers, business analysts, all to talk the same language. And think about the various tools that we want to use. So fairly obviously, word processors and spreadsheets, although spreadsheets are often very much abused and can cause a lot of problems. Shared calendars, so we know when meetings are. Sprint management tools, although a lot of sprint management tools are very low tech. Wikis are incredibly useful for storing information which is readily accessible. We need UML diagramming tools to describe our applications. And we need issue and task management tools to manage the workflow. We have the concept of artifact creation. An artifact is simply a byproduct or result of some operation on some kind of um, code. So very important to source control systems. They manage the versioning of our code and make sure that we're building the right thing from the right versions of the software. We've got continuous integration tools, very important for detecting problems early so that they can be fixed and so they don't delay other developers' work. We have build tools which assemble the components of our software from source code through the various artifacts to the production executables. We also need to gather documentation information and there are tools that do that. The most complex stage of any software development is the code development stage and there are many tools that are needed at this stage. There's a variety of different editors. We need different databases, different types of databases, different tools for building the software. We need tools for code review. There's also some very important code quality tools which can assess the quality of the code and identify common problems very quickly. We have various things like REST API design and that's a very difficult thing to do. Develop an API for communicating across a network using the REST APIs is very, very difficult to coordinate. User interfaces are also incredibly difficult to describe and we get to work well. We also need to be able to map code to databases. We need unit testing and mocking frameworks to make sure that our code is fully custodied. The very important integrated development environments, they save a lot of time. Developers effectively have an operating system for which they can develop code without having to go outside of it. And then of course we've got the compilers and interpreters which tend to just work behind the scenes turning our code from source code into executable code. Testing is vitally important. We start off with unit testing and mocking frameworks for doing test-driven development. We've got scripting for writing more uh, advanced tests such as integration tests. We've got test harnesses which test full systems and partial systems. And we've got user interface playback tools for testing web interfaces. We've also got packaging tools. We have repositories where software is stored which we can fetch and integrate with our system at any time. Build tools appear here again. We've got container management tools which are increasingly important. People like the use of containers where you have one application per unit of deployment which can communicate with each other. And then we've got the deployment descriptor generation tools which is very, also very important because deployment descriptors which describe how software interacts with containers are very difficult to write. Then we've got release management tools which are also very important. Change management systems. We don't make change into production unless it's been fully documented and approved. We need approval systems to approve releases. We need to have important rollback mechanisms. If we deploy a, an erroneous system into production, we need to get back to the previous version as quickly as possible. We need to automate the process of release. We also need to be able to schedule tasks so that we can run various components of the system at the right time and in the right sequence and the important enterprise integration tools which allow us to deploy and change applications dynamically, automatically. Very important configuration and monitoring tools. Infrastructure configuration and management. We don't want to do it manually, we want it automated. We have the concept of infrastructure as code, basically scripting which controls the infrastructure. Request tracing tools. Find out exactly what happens when a request is made, is it being executed, and put into production. Performance monitoring is vitally important. 
make sure our systems are doing what they're supposed to be doing in a timely fashion. Also log file analysis tools. Many, many systems produce a lot of log files. The output is very, very verbose. We need to look for the interesting things, which are usually things going wrong, which are very small parts of the logging. Then we need to be able to report issues as soon as we can detect them and have the processing mechanism in place to deal with them. Hey, want to become an expert in cloud computing? Then subscribe to Simply Learn's channel and click here to watch more such videos. To nerd up and get certified in cloud computing, click here.